military personnel and hunters landed on Jeju Island to recover the remains of Hunter Min Byung-gu. They were from the Yongnam District's guild, the Night Order. The master of the Night Order guild, Park Jong-su, had to doubt his own eyes, because there was a good-looking foreign man leisurely strolling out of the ant tunnel's entrance at that very moment. But that was just impossible. The ants being completely wiped out should still be a top secret, so how could this be? I ask you who you are. Why are you coming out from there? It was unknown whether the foreigner didn't understand a single word coming out of his mouth or wasn't planning to answer in the first place. No, that man just stood there, smiling brightly. Jiang yun T always had been the act first, talk later type of a guy. But even he had to take a step back and cautiously observe his surroundings after sensing the ominous aura. Unfortunately, soldiers didn't possess the hunter-like sensory perception. They belatedly discovered the foreigner's presence and hurriedly raised their firearms. Park jong Su quickly dissuaded them, fearing that they might end up inadvertently killing someone. He couldn't understand the language being spoken here. It wasn't that he had never heard of it, but more like it didn't even originate from Earth, to begin with. Judging from the way that man sounded and how he enunciated the words. What? What is he saying? One could sometimes meet intelligent monsters in higher rank dungeons. What that man said sounded almost like the language spoken by those creatures. Which means, is that. Snap. Like puppets with their strings cut, the soldiers and hunters all collapsed to the ground along with the sound of a crisp finger snap. That mysterious man wasn't responsible for this event. He looked behind him and testily spoke up. What do you think you're doing? There was a short-statured middle-aged man standing behind him now. There's no need to make a commotion here. I just put them all to sleep. The middle-aged man also wasn't speaking in the language of humans. Did you confirm it? The mysterious man nodded his head. It's definitely his power. How strange. The middle-aged man's gaze now shifted over to the collapsed hunters. Why is he helping out these humans? Who knows what he is thinking? If you're curious, why don't you go ask him personally? I'll decline. The middle-aged man shook his head before continuing on. We commence with the hunt as planned. Nothing has changed. Got it. The middle-aged man lightly twirled his hand in the air. A black gate small enough to let a person through opened up there. Oh, by the way. The middle-aged man stopped briefly and looked behind him when the mysterious man called out to him. I think one of them is here. You mean, here in South Korea? Since we're here, how about we take care of that guy, first? The middle-aged man closed his eyes slightly. Soon, the information the mysterious man was talking about flowed into his head. However, the middle-aged man didn't look wholly convinced. If it's around here, let's leave it to his hands. You don't want to get involved, is that it? It's fine to think of it that way. It doesn't matter. The middle-aged man and his trailing voice soon disappeared along with the gate itself. After confirming that the black gate was closed for good, the mysterious man muttered to himself. What a coward. He took a look at all the unmoving humans lying on the ground. They were only knocked out for a little while and should regain their consciousness soon enough. The man snorted derisively and extended his hand towards the humans. However, he quietly withdrew at his hand. Well, there's no need to raise a commotion. He also entered a small gate and disappeared from the spot, as well. The key he found inside the cursed random box was shining brightly as if to remind him of where it had been hiding all along. Rarity. Type. Key. You have met the required condition. A key allowing you entry into the Karutenan Temple. It can be used at the designated gate. The location of the designated gate will be revealed after the predetermined time has been reached. Remaining time, 417, 652. The item information he couldn't see before was now filling up his view. Karutenin Temple. Jin Wu began tilting his head in confusion. What was going on here? He was pretty certain that he had never heard of that name before. So how come it sounded so familiar to him? No, hold on. I have heard of it before. He carefully combed through the maze of his memories until he finally recalled what he was searching for and his brows shot up in response. The Dual Dungeon. More specifically, that name was etched on a stone tablet held by a statue, found in the ancient temple located right at the end of the Dual Dungeon. The memories of that fateful day were coming back to him one by one. Indeed, that stone tablet's texts indicated that the name of the temple filled with those terrifying statues was none other than Karutenan. It couldn't have been a simple coincidence that the name carved into that stone tablet and the name of the temple and the key's information was exactly the same. Which could mean, I can go back inside that place with this key. The system was definitely summoning him, summoning him back to the place where it all began. The key that emitted the bright light all on its own, perhaps fearing the distinct possibility of him never bothering to read its information. And then, there was the name of the location where this key was supposed to be used, written so clearly that he'd never miss it. I still have over two weeks left. The system hadn't lied to him once until now. 
So, the gate in question would definitely open up in the location as noted in the item's information. Was I really planning to walk in there again? Ha ha ha. A wry chuckle leaked out of his mouth without him realizing it. He used to break out in an uncontrollable shiver just from recalling the emptiness below his knee he saw back then. But now, fighting spirit began burning powerfully in his eyes, instead. I'm different now. He felt utterly confident of his chances now. Heck, he even felt a certain expectation bubbling up inside him, wondering if he'd be able to turn those stone statues, or even the god statue itself, into his shadow soldiers. There was also something else to consider. He might be hit with an unknown penalty if he decided to ignore the system's summons. Didn't he already realize the fact that, depending on the choices he makes, the system would either become his ally or an enemy? He had left the very motivated Yu Jin Ho in charge of the initial process of founding a guild. I shall never forgive those trying to obstruct the path of Haiyang Nin. Yu Jin Ho quickly screen captured the offending online forum post in question, as well as the comments appearing below it. And then, proceeded to write up a formal letter of complaint with lightning speed. He moved so expertly and quickly that he must have had more than enough experience doing this thing. And, in the blink of an eye, his work was done. Phew. His hand departing from the computer's keyboard lightly wiped away a single bead of sweat rolling down his forehead. He had done it again. Today, he was indeed successful in rooting out an insidious group trying to slander his Haiyang Nim. So, it was you. Jin Wu heard that there was someone out there that pounced on any negative comments or false articles about him online like a wild beast and, while relying on the threat of legal action, demanded them to be taken down immediately. But to think, that person was someone so close by. Yu Jin Ho's complexion reddened from embarrassment now that his secret activity had been inadvertently exposed to the open. Hi Young Nim, it's only been a day since we started advertising on the online job marketplace, but we've been swarmed by the applicants wanting to become our fellow founding members, so I went ahead and compiled a list for you to take a look. Oh, that, let's talk about it after I come back. He was running short on time, to begin with. Hi Young Nim, have you decided on the name of the guild? Indeed, this was the most pressing issue of them all. Because, you'd need a name of the guild if you wanted to place job postings on the bulletin boards, or even when conducting other official businesses, now wouldn't it? Does he have something in mind for the name of the guild? Yu Jin Ho's heart was pounding in anticipation for Jin Wu's answer. He was fully prepared to suggest the names he had thought up if Haiyang Nim was unable to come up with one. How about putting the Xiang of Xiang Jin Wu and Yu of Yu Jin Ho together to name the guild Xiang Yu? He quickly shook his head, though. It's got a nice meaning, but uh, it sounds a bit. If you were to consider how it sounded, then it was indeed better to flip the two words around to make Yu Xiong. But then again, he'd never be able to accept the fact that his own surname would come before his Haiyang Nims. Hang on a minute. What if I just take the last part of our names and name the guild Wu Ho? Jin Wu pondered for a bit while Yu Jin Ho continued to gaze at him with eyes glinting with the light of expectation. A smirk found its way to Jin Wu's lips and he finally made his reply. How about, Solo Play Guild? Eh? Hey, Yu Jin Ho blinked his eyes several times. Was he supposed to start laughing here? But, didn't Jin Wu's expression look like he wasn't joking at all? Jin Wu didn't expect to see a reaction anyway, so he quickly turned towards the door to leave. See you later. Yu Jin Ho fell into a train of thought while watching Jin Wu make his exit from the office. So, there was something Haiyang Nim couldn't do, after all. As expected, his Haiyang Nim was a human being, just like everyone else. Although he was afraid that the solo play would get stuck as the guild's name, Yu Jin Ho also felt just a tiny bit more reassured after being reminded of Jin Wu being a human like him. Well, I'm speechless. But, I thought that you can't call out that many summoned creatures. My ten-year-old tumor got cured from watching the assault of Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim's summoned creatures. By the way, mister, that tumor must have been a minor one since you had it for only ten years. It was so cool. It was the best. I lost my parents four years ago on Jeju Island. I know that Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim won't read this, but the operation managed to capture the interest of all South Korean citizens. It was no wonder that various online forums were overflowing with the stories related to the raid, and Jin Wu's name always cropped up in those discussions. Also, a hot debate regarding how high Jin Wu's skills should be rated opened up among the netizens famed for their love of comparisons. With his powers, shouldn't we say that our country now also has a special authority rank in our midst? Aye aye. With only that, you should limit your intake of kimchi soup per day. But, why not? He almost solo cleared a rank S dungeon, 
and the gap between him and other rank S hunters is pretty vast, you know. Hunter Xiong Jin Wu's record isn't extensive enough. If his skills are for real, then people will acknowledge him sooner or later. In any case, man, he was so freaking awesome. A ranky is only a bit better than a regular person, so how can someone like that become so strong? Is Hunter Xiang Jin Wu a reawakened? Lots of people don't seem to know that Xiang Jin Wu is a reawakened. He applied to have his private information protected right away, so. Of course, there were some people among many who felt mighty uncomfortable about Jin Wu as well. But, hold up. If Xiang Jin Wu participated in the raid from the get-go, Min Byung Gu wouldn't have died, right? He wanted to be left out in the beginning, so why did he show up in the middle? Looks like guys above mine haven't seen the article put up by the association explaining themselves yet. What article? Links please. The contents of the article went like this. Even though he was ranked S, Jin Wu lacked experience in entering high-ranked dungeons. Therefore, the association chose to keep him in reserve nearby in case of an emergency, instead of making him join the raid team from the beginning. Once the situation became dire, they decided to insert him right away. It was a hastily cooked up story, but it proved to be enough to convince the masses. Just like how his father sacrificed his life to save a countless number of his colleagues, Hunter Min byung sacrifice wasn't in vain. Without his dedicated effort to heal his comrades, it'd have been really difficult for the Korean hunters to walk out of the ant tunnel alive. Not only that, he used his powers to save the life of one more hunter even in death. Min byung shadow actually felt relieved after it confirmed the color of life gradually seep back into Hunter Cha Hien's complexion. From that alone, Jin Wu could sense how much the healer cared for his comrades. Coincidentally, Jin Wu spotted Cha Hien in the distance as he quietly approached the black and white portrait of the deceased to lay down the flowers. But when their gazes met, she suddenly flinched and fell into a panic state. Did they come together? The members of the Korean team around her sent him a silent greeting with a slight nod of their heads. But Cha Hien looked as if she had no clue which expression she was supposed to make right now. Huh, so that woman can make a face like that, too. He couldn't recall any other times when she didn't carry that expressionless face of hers. Indeed, one should get to know somebody for a longer time before passing judgment, that's for sure. Jin Wu shifted his gaze away and stood before the portrait. Hunter Min Byung-gu within the black photo frame was smiling brightly without a care in the world. Jin Wu placed the flower in front of the portrait and closed his eyes for a brief moment. I hope you find yourself in a better place. Finishing up with the prayer for the departed, he turned around to see a familiar figure approach him from the distance. Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. Below, bassy voice naturally belonged to the association president, Go Gun Huey. You have business in the association. May I inquire what that is? Oh, actually, I need a guild master license, you see. Pardon? A question mark floated up above Gogun Huey's head. Why do you need the guild master license when you already possess a rank S license? Wait, does that mean a rank S can establish a guild without a license? Of course. Gogun Huey formed a good-natured smile and continued on. If you wish to form your own guild, all you have to do is to give the association a call. We'll take care of the rest. The rank S was a realm he never expected to step into half a year ago. So, it wasn't surprising to see Jin Wu greatly underestimate all the cool benefits this rank came with. He was inwardly flustered after learning of something he didn't know until now. But, but, this is actually for the better, isn't it? By any chance, have you cast some kind of a barrier spell over Jeju Island? What do you mean? Where was this barrier magic thingy coming from, all of a sudden? Did something happen in Jeju Island after he killed every ant there and left for home? Go Gun Huey calmly explained what had happened. During the operation to retrieve Hunter Min byung remains, there was an incident of the military personnel and the accompanying hunters losing their consciousness in the same location. Um, rather than losing consciousness, it'd be more appropriate to say that they had all fallen asleep instead. I thought the elite members of the Night Order were asked to go to Jeju Island. Jin Wu's question elicited a nod from Go Gun Huey. They were either hunters in the top of the rank a pile, or rank BS who are very close to rank in terms of their abilities. To be able to put not just one, but several dozens of such people to sleep all at once, a regular rank S mage wouldn't even dare to try performing a spell of that magnitude. That's why I had to ask you about it, just in case. I was hoping that maybe you cast a barrier there but forgot to tell us about it. Here was the solid proof that both Hunter's Association and its boss, Go Gun Huey, rated Jin Wu's abilities incredibly high. Unfortunately for them, Jin Wu's speciality didn't lay in casting debuff or abnormal status magic. I'm sorry, I haven't done that. I see, I guess so. Traces of worry slowly entered Go Gun Huey's expression. 
the most optimistic explanation he could think of turned out to be wide off the mark in the end. What did the hunters say, sir? That is, Gogun Huey formed a troubled face of a man finding it hard to explain something, before continuing on his explanations with some difficulty. Not only the soldiers, but even the hunters can't remember anything that happened before they lost their consciousness. His voice sounded even more dispirited next. Actually, we can't even figure out whether they were victims of a magic spell or not in the first place. If it were just the soldiers, who were simply regular people, it'd be possible to knock them out with something like the sleeping gas, but even the rank of hunters and their exceptional physical abilities fell victim as well. So, it couldn't have been a conventional weapon of some kind. Could it have been a trap left behind by the ants? Jin Wu was really tempted to summon out Baru right now and ask him about it, but if he did that, this funeral venue might morph into a blood-splattered battlefield in no time at all. It was then, the young man who must have been an association employee approached them in hurried steps and whispered something to Go Gun Huey's ear. The association president formed a rueful expression as he spoke to Jin Wu. A guest has arrived sooner than expected, and unfortunately, I must be on my way now. Thank you for your time. You too, sir. After sharing brief goodbyes, Go Gun Huey hurriedly left the venue and disappeared from the view along with that unnamed employee. Now that he no longer had any reason to go to the association, Jin Wu figured that he might as well go home. Instead, he too left the venue and began walking towards the location of the parked van. But, then, what's this? He seemed to have picked up a somewhat puzzling tale since from a short while ago. Jin Wu tilted his head in confusion. Aren't you supposed to do your best not to get discovered when tailing someone? Not only that, any all regular folks wouldn't even dare to dream about tailing a rank S hunter, too. Huh? Well, I'll be. Jin Wu was getting more and more dumbfounded here. He even realized for the first time that he didn't want to deal seriously with someone who was this unprofessional at what he was supposed to do. However, just as Jin Wu was about to grab the door handle of his van, he heard a voice calling out to him from behind. Are you Mr. Xiang Jin Wu? Jin Wu smirked slightly and turned around while thinking to himself, Well, you finally revealed your true colors, haven't you? Yes, I am. But then, Jin Wu was momentarily taken aback after confirming the face of his opponent. He's a foreigner. That man's Korean was so perfect that Jin Wu didn't expect him to be a Westerner at all. Meanwhile, the young Westerner, sporting a business suit so slick that it bordered on being a fashion statement, formed a smile as bright as his golden hair color. This is who I am. The man pulled out a business card and presented it to Jin Wu. His name, the organization he worked for, as well as his contact numbers, were all printed in large, legible letters on the card. Hunter Bureau. What did an elite agent from the most powerful organization in the US want from him now? No. There's only one reason why the Hunter Bureau would want to speak to a hunter. Jin Wu tore his eyes away from the card and looked straight at the agent, prompting the American to introduce himself with a sunny smile. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. Please call me Adam from now on. There is a piece of information we'd like to share with you, Hunter Nim. Information, is it? Yes. And you won't ever hear about this information from any other existing country or organization in the world. Except ours, of course. Jin Wu tilted his head slightly. What would be their reason for revealing such highly classified information to a foreign hunter like him, a complete stranger? Why are you willing to share such information with me? Jin Wu's probing question only managed to elicit another round of a refreshing smile from Adam White. We certainly will get something in return by revealing this information to an exclusive group of a specially chosen few. Specially chosen few, he said. Which meant that the Americans considered Jin Wu to be eligible to enter that category now. Sure enough, that roused his curiosity rather greatly. Okay, let's hear it. That is as far as I'm permitted to tell you, Hunter Nim. As for the rest, you'll have to hear it from our deputy director. We have a car ready nearby. How about accompanying me to meet up with the deputy director? Unfortunately for him, though, it was Jin Wu who had the final say in the matter. Information, is it? It could only be one of two things. Either it was info that would benefit him in some way after learning of it, or a tip of someone coming after his life. Funnily enough, he didn't feel all that compelled to get to the bottom of this matter at the moment. I'll sleep on it and give you a call later. Adam felt like someone had just punched him in the back of his head as this unexpected turn of the conversation left him reeling in shock. What? The deputy director of the Hunter Bureau came all this way to share information, yet he's ignoring that and wants to go on his way. Jin Wu didn't look like he was bluffing here, because he was already opening the driver's door of the van. Cold perspiration immediately coated Adam White's forehead. 
If Hunter Seong Jin Woo was allowed to slip through his fingers now, then who knew when he'd get another chance like this? No, there was even a distinct possibility that this could be the very last time. It was unknown whether the Korean intended for this reaction or not. But without a doubt, the ones ruining the missed opportunity would be them, not him. Well, have a nice day. Just as Jin Woo was about to climb into the van, the restless Adam White urgently cried out. Upgrader. An upgrader. Adam formed an expression of a defeated man and explained the meaning behind the word he just spat out. Did you know that there is an awakened who can enhance the abilities of other awakened? Yup, you should have started with that from the beginning. Right away, Jin Woo realized that the stuff being shared by Agent Adam White, no, the deputy director of the Hunter Bureau, was actually of far greater importance than mere information. An awakened who can enhance other awakened, is it? Finally, Jin Woo felt compelled enough now. We're here. Jin Woo noted that the name of the hotel was the same as the one from the memo Yu Jin Ho handed over to him not too long ago. Wait, that English-speaking foreigner Yu Jin Ho was talking about, could it have been one of these guys? Jin Woo followed after Adam White and climbed up to the suite where the deputy director was waiting for him. The deputy director of the Hunter Bureau, Michael Connor, failed to disguise his excitement at the sight of a certain oriental man standing behind his subordinate. Very good. One of the more difficult aspects of negotiation was bringing the other party to the negotiating table. One could even declare that half the battle was won already by doing so. His self-introduction was translated into fluent Korean with the speed of lightning by Adam White. Allow me to be frank with you, Seong Jin Woo Hunter Nim. With a solemn, determined face, the deputy director pushed a rather sizable mountain of files towards Jin Woo and continued on. We, at the United States of America, want you, Seong Jin Woo Hunter Nim. These are, these are all the documents needed to emigrate to America. Now normally, you'd need at least one or two years for these papers to be processed. However, it'll be a different story for you, Seong Jin Woo Hunter Nim. The deputy director then raised his index finger. Just a single second, he declared in a very confident voice. If you agree to immigrate, then you'll become an American citizen in one second. And not as a simple, regular citizen. Either, no, you become eligible to receive the equal treatment as the nation's existing top-ranked hunters. Jin Woo looked back at the deputy director. But, I only came here because Adam said something about some information. The deputy director let out a burst of genial laughter when he heard that. That isn't entirely unrelated to what I was talking about. I don't understand. Hunter Nim, if you give us your word that you'll become the next American hunter, then we will definitely enhance your abilities to an even higher realm. The so-called upgrader. It seemed that this awaken could really do what that moniker implied. Still, Jin Woo was not entirely convinced, even if the deputy director said roughly the same thing as Agent Adam White. Could there really be an awakened possessing such a power? That's why he decided to make DMN sure. To enhance one's abilities, can such a thing be for real? Jin Woo's apparent interest caused the deputy director to become even more excited. Actually, she's here with us right now. Jin Woo already knew that there was someone else within the hotel's suite. From a while ago, he had picked up on the minute amount of magic power leaking out from the gap of the closed door just over there. Because the magic energy emitted didn't seem all that powerful. He was inwardly thinking that person was too weak to be a bodyguard of someone as important as the Hunter Bureau's deputy director. And now, his suspicion proved to be correct. The deputy director quickly issued an order. Please bring Madame Selner here. Click. Almost immediately, the door was opened and two agents escorted a middle-aged African-American woman out from the room beyond. Jin Wu's eyes narrowed slightly after picking up on a strange vibe coming off of her. Somehow, she gave off a different aura from other, regular awakened. This is Madame Norma Selner. She is the lone awakened, the only one of her type in the entire world, who can enhance the abilities of other awakened to even greater heights. At the end of the introduction, Madame Selner did a simple nod of her head as a greeting to Jin Wu. He reciprocated the greeting with the nod, as well. Madame Selner, please, if you will, briefly explain what you can do to Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. She formed a teasing smile while staring at the still unconvinced Jin Wu's face. Everyone has the same look as you, in the beginning, Hunter Nim. However, she then leaned in closer to Jin Wu and whispered softly to him. Once they have a taste, they have no choice but to beg me for more. Madam, please. The deputy director furrowed his brows a little, prompting her to laugh out and wave her hand about. I know, I know. Don't worry, Director Connor. I know that he's a very important man. Still with an alluring smile, Madam Selner began with her explanation. Siang Jin Wu Hunter Nim. 
As you may know already, all Awakened face a limit they can't breach. No one can overcome it. That was why the ranks of the Awakened would never change, unless one was lucky enough to go through a reawakening process. This was common knowledge that all living hunters out there knew all too well. But, madam, you can. Even before Jin Wu could finish his question, Madam Selner formed an expression of a little kid picking up the final piece of strawberry on top of a cake that she'd been saving up for the very last. You're correct. Jin Wu's eyes grew progressively wider. I can increase that limit even higher in three separate stages. I don't know whether to call it a forced reawakening or simply waking up the latent potential sleeping within the subject already. But yes, I can do it. What an incredible ability that was. What she said are all true. It's just that, once she uses her powers once, she needs to take a lengthy break to recover her energy. So, only around three to four lucky awaken get to enjoy this benefit in a single year. How effective is it? It depends on individuals, but once one goes through all three stages, they say that they grew stronger by a minimum of 20%, and as much as 30%, over their original powers. 20 to 30%. With the average of his stat values nearing the 250 mark, if Jin Wu got that mystery enhancement, that average value would shoot past the 300 mark instead. Without a doubt, that would be an enormous leap up. As long as these guys weren't lying to him, of course. Is she casting a buff that raises one's powers? Or is it more like raising the fixed level cap? Regardless of what it was, the ability she possessed would be like a precious treasure for all the hunters out there which also meant that there should be no shortages of people aiming for her, too. We ensure her absolute safety and reward her accordingly, while she enhances the abilities of those hunters we deem worthy of joining us. We have been maintaining this symbiotic relationship for a long time now. And so, that's where the deputy director bookended the explanation. Now, the time for the fireworks to begin. Madam Selner's ability, that is precisely the gift we wish to give to you, Hunter Nim. A gift, is it? Indeed, could there be a gift even more valuable than this one? If you become a hunter of the United States of America, you will be the first in line to receive this benefit. Also, we will make sure that you get the best possible terms when negotiating with any guilds you wish to join. From the perspective of an ordinary hunter, these were simply too good of conditions to say no to. Only now could Jin Wu understand why H. Wang Dong Su didn't even hesitate once and emigrated to the States when everyone was criticizing him for it. The enormous sum of money the Americans reportedly paid him was most likely a cover-up story to hide the real reason. Regular hunters would lose their collective SHT if they ever heard of such a tale. Can you prove that she really possesses such a power? Everything they said so far were just words, and there had been no proof to back them up yet. It was her turn to button next. No need to rush. Today, I'm only here to undo the first button, you know. Jin Wu finally realized what she meant earlier. One taste, and people beg her for more, was it. Just as she had alluded to, every hunter seeing her powers with their own eyes chose to head to America right away, 100 times out of 100. Her sky-high confidence was based off on that. The deputy director quietly asked a question to Jin Wu. It is as she says. So, will you let us unlock your first stage? Without anything in return. Think of it as a service from us, Hunter Nim. Madam Selner lightly grasped Jin Wu's wrist. When he turned to look at her, she formed a gentle smile and gestured to him to get closer. Please, look into my eyes. Look deeply into them. That will be your first step. Was she telling the truth? To confirm if this Madame Selner really did possess the power the Hunter Bureau was swearing by, Jin Wu decided to follow her instructions for the time being. The deputy director leaned against the back of the chair and crossed his arms. It's done. He's ours now. The game was already over. Hunter Xiong Jin Wu had been constantly maintaining that cold, indifferent expression until now. But that was only because he hadn't yet experienced what this lady's power had to offer. Once the first lifting of the natural limit was completed, Hunter Xiong Jin Wu would call them on his own volition sooner rather than later. No, if he had an impulsive personality, then he might sign the immigration documents right here, right now. The deputy director's curiosity shifted onto something else now. Just how high will his limit be, I wonder. The deputy director uncrossed his arms and rubbed his chin. His eyes of anticipation firmly locked on Jin Wu. But it was then. Madame Selner sucked in her breath as her eyes began to quake quite violently. Madame Selner stared deep into Jin Wu's eyes for a long time, before she screamed at the top of her lungs as if she had seen something she shouldn't have. She fell off the chair onto the floor, almost right away. Two agents here to guard her whipped their pistols out and took aim at Jin Wu. Stop. Have you all lost your minds? The deputy director witnessed the agents and their recklessness and cried out in alarm. 
Loud cussing exploded out of his mouth as he jumped up from his sitting position to push down the pointed pistols of the agents. Do you not know who this person is? How dare you point at him with such a thing? But, sir, the madam is. You idiots. If you're that worried about Madame Selner, then check up on her first. And my apologies. The agents quickly put their guns away and supported the shivering Madame Selner off from the ground. Her complexion had become so pale that she looked quite pitiful right now. Meanwhile, the deputy director bowed his back 90 degrees to Jin Wu. I'm truly sorry, Hunter Nim. My agents committed a grave blunder. Judging from the previously relaxed voice of the deputy director tremble like that, he must have been frightened out of his wits rather greatly just now. They are trained to put the safety of the madam above all else, but to think, they'd be stupid enough to point a gun at a rank S hunter. If something like this happened in front of either Thomas Andre or China's Liu Zhaijing, then the hearts of those two agents pulling out their guns would have stopped beating long before he had the chance to apologize. What a relief that Hunter Xiong Jin Wu was such an understanding gentleman. The deputy director sighed out in relief and wiped the pooled sweat off his nose. He managed to put out the most pressing flames first. Next, it was time to focus on the other matter. Madam, you're sweating so much. Are you feeling unwell somewhere? The deputy director may have shed a few cold sweat drops over the volatile situation just now, but she was completely soaked from head to toe at the moment. What's going on here? Worried about her condition, Jin Wu got up from the chair and cautiously made his approach, but she didn't want to look him in the eye and began shivering even harder. Madam Selner's condition isn't very good today. May I give you a call at another time? After Jin Wu had left, the deputy director found himself alone with Madam Selner in the hotel's suite. Madam, what happened back there? They had worked with many hunters before, and this wasn't Madam Selner's first rodeo either, meaning this would be the first time something like this happened. She suppressed her pounding heart and managed to squeeze out her trembling voice. He is a king, a very powerful king. The deputy director's eyes grew wider and wider. Those who knew how her power worked were the director of the Hunter Bureau, the deputy, and of course, Madame Selner herself. Only these three. And she confirmed that Hunter Siong Jin Wu was a king. Ba dump, ba dump. The deputy director sensed his heartbeat pick up pace, which means he's on the same level as the special authority rank hunters. She shook her head. No, I don't. This was my first time experiencing such a phenomenon, so I can't be sure at all. He is definitely a king, but he's also different from the other kings. When I looked into him, it too was looking back at me. But, other hunters also. No, not Hunter Siong Jin Wu. But the endless darkness hiding within him was staring back at me. Madame Selner hysterically cried out. Her complexion paled again and her body shuddered greatly. This was the display of an instinctual fear all living organisms possessed. The fear of death. And he, the deputy director focused on her words again. Her lips parted with so much difficulty. He doesn't have any limits. What? A gate formed in the middle of a road. Not only that, it was rated to be a rank B gate that no regular raid team could do something about, too. Where is it located? The best course of action for this problem was to contact a major guild and have them send over a capable raid team. But, then, hold on. Having heard the report from the agent on site, Go Gun Huey's expression became a bit strange. Didn't Hunter Xiong Jin Wu get an office for his guild around there? The road suddenly became really clogged up. Jin Wu was in deep contemplation as he found himself stuck in the middle of an unmoving sea of traffic. That lady, she definitely saw something. That woman called Madame Norma Selner. She must have faced countless powerful hunters, yet she couldn't even meet his gaze because she felt a crippling fear of him. Just what did she see in him? Was it the traces of his system? The system would make a few ridiculous demands from him every now and then, sure, but it was certainly not a scary existence. Instead of being scary, that thing's my greatest ally. However, how would it look like in other people's views? Besides all that, what is up with this traffic, man? Jin Wu furrowed his brows at the road ahead utterly mired in congestion as far as his eyes could see. This is why taking the subway is so much more convenient. Just as he began wondering if there was an accident up ahead or something. His phone stuck in the car charger vibrated rather noisily. Jin Wu checked the ID of the caller. It's the association president. They saw each other in the funeral venue only a few hours ago. So what business did he have in calling him so soon? Jin Wu tapped the answer icon. Hunter Nim. It's Go Gun Huey speaking. The association president explained the situation taking place in the middle of Seoul in a calm voice. Excuse me. A gate opened up in the middle of the road. He was beginning to think that this traffic jam was far too heavy to be normal. But there was a good reason behind it, as it turned out. Our agents have evaluated it as a rank B gate. Would you like to take care of it for us, Hunter Nim? 
Jin Wu struggled to suppress the giggles of joy this truly excellent news managed to awaken. I don't have the raid permit, so can I just enter like that, sir? Hunter Nim, who issues the raid permits? It's issued by the association. And who am I? Jin Wu suppressed his laughter again and replied seriously. You're the president of the Hunters Association. That's why, don't worry about anything and please take care of it. Well, in that case, thank you for the me. No, I mean, thank you for the opportunity. Jin Wu clenched his fist. He climbed out of the van and began walking after the trace of the magic energy leaking out from the gate. Because of the cars packed tightly in all sides, he didn't even need to park the van somewhere else, too. Reporters had already formed a cordon around the gate by the time he got there, and the association employees, as well as the members of the local police force, were restricting the access. Hmm. Jin Wu brushed past the wall of the reporters and approached the gate, but then, a female association employee with a by-the-book demeanor abruptly blocked his path. Please hold it. What do you think you're doing? She pushed at his chest and spoke loudly. Too bad, no matter how hard she pushed with her small hands, Jin Wu didn't show any signs of budging from the spot. Siang Jin Wu, wasn't he the same guy who killed all those ant monsters on Jeju Island? It's Siang Jin Wu. I think Siang Jin Wu came here to deal with the gate personally. People feeling fed up from being stuck here began recognizing Jin Wu, and their complexions brightened greatly. Some people among them with appointments to get to even cried out in elation, too. However, the female employee completely disregarded the reactions of the citizens and showed no signs of backing down. She hesitated slightly before asking him, What? What brings you here? What did she even mean? What brings him here? There would be only one reason why a hunter chose to stand before a gate, wouldn't it? Even if you're a rank S hunter, sir, I will not tolerate any behavior that ignores proper procedures. Jin Wu was lost for words and blankly stared at her face. He didn't expect her to come out like this at all. She thought that she had succeeded in persuading a rank S hunter and continued on with her next question. Did you obtain the raid permit? No, wait. Even if you did obtain the permit, since you haven't met the minimum required number of team members, you can't be allowed in. The female employee was impressively unyielding. Jin Wu could tell from the look in her eyes that she wasn't doing this out of spite. No, she just seemed to be the type to stick as close to the rule book as humanly possible. Hold on for a sec. Jin Wu immediately called somebody on the phone. After the call connected to the other side, he pushed the phone to her. Here, when the female employee looked at him puzzled, Jin Wu spoke to her in a clear voice. Please, take it. The call's actually for you. She maintained her puzzled expression while asking him. W who is it on the phone? Someone else you may not tolerate as well. She inadvertently took the phone from him, but when she discovered the name of the call's receiver appearing on the screen, her brows shot up really high. Go, go Gun Huey. This is the association president speaking. Sure enough, it was him. The female employee's eyes trembled noticeably before she began nodding her head over and over again. Yes, yes. No, sir. Yes, yes. I shall do as you say, sir. Jin Wu hurriedly disappeared into the gate. Hu, greatly annoyed by his antics now, the female employee shuddered from dissatisfaction and she threw. Not a curse, but more like an unhappy grumble at his departing back. Father in heaven, sprain that guy's ankle or something inside the dungeon, please. However, Hunter Seong Jin Wu was a man who walked away safely from the Jeju Island that was completely overrun with rank S monsters. Such a guy won't have much trouble inside a rank B dungeon, probably. But then, it happened at that moment. Screams were rising up from here and there. Ooh, what's going on here? Why is it changing to red color? Right after Jin Wu stepped past the gate, the eerie color of blood slowly spread over its black surface. It was a red gate. A terrifying event was unfolding right now. Ah, uh, the female employee felt utterly devastated after seeing the red gate appear. Was it because I prayed for him to get that sprained ankle? Of course, that wasn't it. However, she couldn't get rid of the voices in her head telling her that it was her fault. She was taught that the Red Gate, a portal to another world, was one of the most dangerous places there was. She also heard that even the high-ranked hunters weren't guaranteed to get out of there alive. It can't be. Suddenly, her head was filled with the images of the worst-case scenario, and her complexion paled instantly. The vice master of the tentatively named Solo Play Guild, as well as its chief recruitment officer, its sole lawyer, and even its accountant, Yu Jin Ho smiled brightly as he saw Jin Wu entering the office. What's this? Jin Wu was nonchalant in his reply. There was an open gate on the way to the office, so I made a pit stop. He went out only a couple of hours ago, yet during such a short period of time, he found a high-ranking dungeon, cleared it completely, and brought out all the magic crystals found within. As expected of you, you're amazing, Hyung Nim. 
Jin Wu quickly strode over to the conference suite as soon as Yu Jin Ho was finished and opened the door wide open. And then, inside this mostly empty conference suite, he found a woman sipping on a can of coffee all alone and in silence turning her head to meet his gaze. Incidentally, Yu Jin Ho had to quickly dash outside to get that coffee because they hadn't even bought proper office equipment yet. What brings you here, Hunter Nim? Jin Wu asked his guest with a dumbfounded expression on his face. Then, Cha Hien opened her own mouth, still looking up at him from her sitting position. I came to join your guild. Did he hear that right? Jin Wu ended up doubting his own hearing. Then, Cha Hien was the vice master of South Korea's top guild, and her skills were ranked to be among the very best. But she willingly walked into a guild that hadn't even taken its first baby step yet. Unless she was being threatened into coming here, how could this situation make any sense? But then again, ah, uh, well, just who'd be brave enough to threaten her? Jin Wu decided to bring up the one person with enough clout to potentially threaten her in South Korea. Did the association president order you to do this? Cha He informed a confused expression, evidently not understanding why Go Gun Huey was being brought up in this discussion. Why would he? It was Jin Wu who couldn't understand what was going on here. So why was she making that face even though she was the reason for all this confusion? She's restless. Her heartbeat, her breathing, even the glow within her eyes. She was doing her best to look composed, but there was no fooling Jin Wu's sky-high perception. So, the question was, why was she forcing herself to this extent and trying to enter the tentatively named Solo Play Guild? Jin Wu had to ask her. Don't you still have some time left in the duration of your contract with the Hunter's Guild? Now normally, the Guild would negotiate contracts with Hunters in five-year terms. Cha Hien joined the Hunter's Guild two years ago when she was evaluated to be a rank S, so at a bare minimum, she should still have three years left in her contract. I have enough money to pay the penalty for breach of contract. Cha Hien's collected answer only elicited Jin Wu's head tilting. Most of the time, such a penalty fee would be between two to three times the original signing fee. Thinking about the exorbitant sum the Hunter's Guild must have forked out in order to sign up a rank S hunter like her, one didn't need to be a genius to figure out that the breach of contract penalty fee would be absolutely horrendous, as well. Since he was about to speak to her about harsh reality, Jin Wu's attitude became very businesslike. Our solo play guild simply can't afford to pay the kind of signing fee your skill set warrants, Cha Hunter Nim. The name of your guild is Solo Play. You have a problem with the name that the Vice Master and myself came up with. No, not really. Cha Hien let a soft sigh escape from her and continued on. It doesn't matter. It's fine if you don't pay me the contract signing fee. She didn't mind signing a contract without any payment, even though she'd have to pay an enormous breach of contract fee to the Hunter's Guild. What is she scheming here? At this point, he simply had to ask her or he'd die of curiosity. Why are you willing to go through such a ringer just to join our guild? As expected, Cha Hien couldn't easily answer him and kept her mouth resolutely shut. But, how can I even explain myself to him? That I sensed your presence next to me even after I lost my consciousness from the attack of that mutated ant monster. That, I felt safe and warm after picking up on your scent as I sank deeper into an empty and endless dark void. There was no word in this world adequate enough to describe what she felt back then. Even if I explain it, he'd only say that I've gone mad. Her heart began beating faster after she learned of Hunter Seong Jin Wu really being there. She felt so relieved, knowing that she wasn't imagining things. And also, what if, she discovered that she wanted Jin Wu to be by her side in the worst case scenario of her being unable to escape from the cold blade of death. To think, it'd be like please be right by my side until my final moments. How could she even attempt saying that, when just thinking about it made her blush uncontrollably? That was an impossible task for Cha Hien who didn't know anything about a normal girl's sensibilities. That was why she finally spoke up an answer she cooked up before coming here. To be more comfortable, she raised her head to meet Jin Wu's gaze and continue on with the rest. I wish to be live more comfortably. Although it wasn't exactly what she tried to say, it wasn't a complete lie, either. She couldn't even lift her head properly from all the horrendous stink when high-ranked hunters were standing next to her. But, in contrast, she felt her mind getting peaceful in the presence of Jin Wu. The meaning of Cha Hien's comfortable was precisely that. Jin Wu didn't interpret the meaning that way, but still, he could understand where she was coming from. He slowly nodded his head from her answer. She apparently wanted to leave a big guild like the Hunters and spend a more comfortable time in a far smaller guild like his. According to Jin Wu's knowledge, Cha Hien was either 22 or 23 years old. I'm sure the burden that a rank S must carry would be pretty heavy for a woman in her early 20s. Especially more so, after she felt the threat of death during the Jeju Island raid. 
Jin Wu could easily understand her feelings as he too felt like abandoning everything and running away from it all countless times, back when he still worked for the association. Unfortunately for her, although her plight is pitiable, but, but, he couldn't just accept her like that. Why would he have named the guild Solo Play? That was because he planned to book dungeons using the name of his guild and clear them all by himself. Actually, our guild has an admittance test you need to go through. Pardon? But, the job posting didn't specify anything lie. Jin Wu quickly cut off Cha Hien's flustered words. This rule is pretty new, so it's possible that the vice master may have made a small error. The glow in Cha Hien's eyes became quite serious at the mention of a test. What kind of a test is it? Jin Wu was inwardly taken by surprise from her reaction. This gal, she was really serious. Because of her professional pride, he expected her to quit after being told about taking a test. However, Cha Hien acted the exact opposite. No, she was actually burning up even hotter with the desire to win. He could sense her fervor hidden behind that expressionless mask of hers. Is she the type to face any fight coming her way head on? Or was this the case of misplaced pride? Whatever the case may have been, Jin Wu couldn't back off now while staying it was all a misunderstanding. It's to win against the summoned creature I pick. He swore that he heard the physical sound of a crack forming on her ego. Xiang Jin Wu Hunter Nim, is that how low your assessment of me is? What a mysterious thing this was. He only looked into her eyes briefly, yet it felt like her voice could be heard so clearly inside his head. However, Cha Hien didn't display any of her thoughts and asked in her usual collected manner, Which summon will you pick? For you, Cha Hunter Nim, I'll especially have to pick the strongest one. All right, she wasn't backing down here. Most likely, she wouldn't have dreamed it in her wildest imaginations. Regarding who became the latest addition to Jin Wu's summoned creatures, no, his shadow army collection. Jin Wu thought that, since her will to win was so strong, she'd give up on her own after tasting defeat. He immediately agreed to the bout. Okay, let's do it. When will the test be? Right now. Jin Wu wanted to establish his guild as soon as possible, so he didn't want to waste any more time on Cha Hien. Since he came up with this idea, might as well do it now. The location would be the Gymnasium of the Hunters Association. A rank S hunter could rent out the gymnasium whenever he felt like it. It was one of the many special privileges afforded to rank S hunters. Got it. Cha Hien nodded her head. She too wanted to move things along as quickly as possible. They both stood up at the same time as if they made a promise to do that. Hold on. It was then, a certain thought flashed past his brain. He quickly called out to Cha Hien as she was about to turn the door handle. Cha Hunter Nim, please wait. Pardon, there's no need to go that way. Cha Hien formed a confused expression. There was only one door in the conference suite. He obviously wasn't suggesting that they should jump out of the window, so. Jin Wu quickly walked over to her unmoving frame. I have a quicker way of getting there, actually. Excuse me, but I must be touching you if I'm to use this method, so will it be alright with you? Oh, Cha Hien recalled what Bi Kyun Ho told her about the situation back then. He said that, as all the members of the Korean assault team found themselves in a life or death situation, Hunter Seong Jin Woo suddenly popped up behind him. Is he trying to show me that skill? She quickly swallowed her dry saliva and looked up at Jin Woo's face that was now much closer than her initial expectations. Sorry about this. Jin Woo lightly embraced her. He thought that such a light hug wouldn't mean anything to her since he had carried her unconscious frame around inside the ant tunnel. But Cha Hien's face was rapidly dying in a beet red color. However, she didn't struggle or try to get out of his embrace. His nice scent. While her face was getting progressively redder and redder, Jin Wu cautiously held her to make sure they wouldn't get separated and finish getting ready. Shadow Exchange Two of them soundlessly got sucked into the shadow beneath their feet. It was right at that moment Yu Jin Ho opened the door and entered the conference suite. He ran out to the local convenience store to buy some refreshments after thinking that the talk might go on for a bit. Please, drink these while you two ch. A high orc shadow soldier met Yu Jin Ho's gaze, and as if he was feeling a bit sheepish over something, scratched the back of his head. The tray in Yu Jin Ho's hand crashed to the floor, and cups of liquid refreshment shattered from the impact. What the hell? The moment the ground disappeared and they got sucked into the shadow, Jin Wu looked at Cha Hee and falling together at the same time. As I thought, his expectation was on the money. He wondered if the skill shadow exchange worked in this manner while using it a few times in the past, and he was right. The identity of the skill shadow exchange was actually a gate. That theory was proven correct when Cha Hien traveled alongside him through the shadow. The entrance is generated below my feet, and the exit is where the determined coordinates are. And those coordinates would be the location of a shadow soldier. Even though there was a limitation of the three-hour-long cooldown time, 
he was still able to create a gate with this skill. If he wanted to, then wouldn't it be possible for him to move to the other side of the planet every three hours? Jin Wu unconsciously swallowed his saliva. Cha Hien quickly spoke to him. I left my weapon back in my car. Oh, you mean that pickaxe? Excuse me. You know, the one you were carrying around back in the rank a dungeon with high orcs in it. Her face reddened as soon as she remembered a small detail she'd been wanting to forget. And no, my weapon is. She then spotted Jin Wu giggling to himself and belatedly realized that he was teasing her just now. Cha Hien shifted her gaze towards the storage located within the gymnasium. I'm sure there will be a weapon I can borrow in the storage. A light gleamed within Jin Wu's eyes after learning of something new. She walked up to the storage and diagonally swiped her hunter license on the electronic lock found on the side of the door. That prompted the storage door to automatically slide open. Rows of not too shabby looking spare weapons were displayed inside the storage. Looking into the interior from a bit of distance away, Jin Wu was inwardly impressed by the preparedness of the Hunters Association. So, there was even stuff like this inside the association. He wondered where all those high taxes hunters had to fork out over the years ended up, but it looked like they were being put to good use. Cha Hien scanned the displayed items before picking up a sword similar in length to the one she'd been using and exited from the storage. I'm ready. Will that be fine? It's not a sword you've been using before, so wouldn't it feel off in your hands? Cha Hien shook her head. It doesn't really matter what weapon it is. Monsters don't care about what weapons hunters are wielding when they fight us, after all. Those were some wise words. Jin Wu carried the same opinion as her, so he didn't argue with her there. At the very least, he found her straightforwardness rather likable. So, calling out my soldier is next, right? As if to prove that she wasn't joking about being ready, a sharp, focused aura oozed out of her. Against someone like her, any all-regular soldier would be sliced up into tiny pieces in no time. That's why, Jin Wu called for the best card he could bring out under the current circumstances. Come out, a small portion separated from Jin Wu's shadow and moved away a couple of steps from him. Then a black knight rose up from the unmoving shadow. The jet black armor in the helm, the red plumage attached to the helm, extending all the way down to his waist. The best sword-wielding shadow soldier in his army. I told her that I'd be summoning the most powerful guy out, but... But, he thought that calling out Baru was a bit too much. Before he was turned into a shadow soldier, Baru was the terrifying creature that nearly drowned the entirety of Korean team members in the pit of pure terror. Hell, even Cha Hee and herself almost died from his attack, too. Jin Woo couldn't bring Baru out when considering the potential mental shock she could suffer after seeing him again. As for Fangs, he might end up destroying the gymnasium, so he was excluded. Mr. Xiang Jin Woo. Jin Woo shifted his gaze over to Cha Hee and what are the conditions for victory and defeat? When he heard her icy voice that was cold enough to instantly freeze the listener's heart, his belief began wavering somewhat. Jin Wu pondered a bit before making his reply. Either my summon is destroyed, or Cha Hunter Nim admits defeat first. Cha Hien briefly nodded her head, then unsheathed the sword she got from the storage. She was only holding a simple, plain magic sword one could buy pretty much anywhere. But even then, the aura oozing out of her was still quite incredible to behold. Yup, she's definitely strong. Jin Wu could sense it. Her surging aura, after she decided to get serious, was definitely fitting for a woman whose skills were rated as the best even among the rank S hunters. Igrid also unsheathed his sword. As a matter of fact, he was now holding a longsword each in his hands. Even then, Jin Wu couldn't help but think that Igrid would be defeated by her at this rate. But then, wait a sec. Didn't she say that it doesn't really matter what weapon it was, right? Jin Wu recalled what she said just now and a smile floated up on his lips as he asked her for a small favor. Can you turn around for a second, please? Cha Hien tilted her head for a bit, but didn't complain and turned around as he asked. Using that gap, Jin Wu summoned the Demon King's longsword out of his inventory and handed it over to Igret. Use this. By saying that she didn't mind what weapon she used, it could also be interpreted as she didn't mind what weapon her opponent was using. Having been bestowed a sword straight from his sovereign, Igrit tried to kneel down to express his profound gratitude, but Jin Wu quickly stopped him. I'm telling you, you don't have to stand on ceremony all the time, you know. If only Iron could learn half of Igrit's attitude. In any case, the preparation was done, so Jin Wu called out to Cha Hien again. It's fine now. She turned around and spotted Igrit now holding a brand new sword that crackled with blue arcs of electricity, which he clearly wasn't holding a minute ago. Soon after Jin Wu signaled the beginning, Igrit swung the Demon King's longsword to activate its passive ability as his opening attack. A strand of lightning flew in a straight line at Cha Hien. She flinched for the briefest of brief moments, but then, like an agile cat, she bent her upper body back and evaded the lightning. 
Without saying anything, Cha Hien gripped the sword tighter in her hands. It was right then. Igrit rushed towards her at a frightening pace from her front to heed his sovereign's order to bring her down. However, she didn't even blink once and also flung herself forward towards her opponent. The association president was in the middle of going through a report. But then, his gaze abruptly shifted over to the window. There should have been no one inside the gymnasium, but the lights there came on just now. Go Ben Huey tilted his head slightly, before picking up his phone to speak to his pa. Yes, sir. Did someone book out the gymnasium today? Sir, I confirmed and no one has booked it today. Is that so? Gogun Huey covered the phone's receiver and organized his thoughts for a bit, before speaking to his subordinate again. Can you send the CCTV feed from the gymnasium into my office? Yes, sir. Please hold on. Shortly thereafter, the live feed was displayed on the giant TV occupying the entire wall of his office. And that's when he got to see Seong Jin Woo and Cha Hee and hugging each other inside the gymnasium. Stunned by what he saw, Go Gun Huey hurriedly coughed to clear his throat. He looked over and over again, but it was definitely those two. He then tilted his head again. Did those two people have such a relationship? But then again, the very first person Hunter Cha Hien searched for when she regained consciousness briefly inside the helicopter was none other than Hunter Seong Jin Wu. It seems that I was very slow on the uptake, huh? A content smile spread on Go Gun Huey's face as he gazed at the two young people on the TV screen. Both of them requested for their private information to be protected as soon as they got their rank S licenses. Even then, there was not one person in this country who didn't know Cha Hien, or for that matter, Seong Jin Wu. So, if two such people wished to spend some quiet time together, there would be no better place than the association's gymnasium after the closing time. I'm sorry about this, but I want you to switch off all the CCTV feed coming from the gymnasium. Sir, but, just say that today was the maintenance day in the records. I understand, sir. The giant TV screen in the president's office showing the CCTV feed switched off as soon as he ended the call. Go Gun Huey took one last look at the gymnasium and returned to perusing the report, a grin still etched on his lips. But, it was then. The surface of the water in his cup vibrated softly as he sensed a minute tremor coming from the gymnasium's direction. Go Gun Huey didn't bother to look at the gymnasium and simply carried on smiling. Indeed, being young is the best. This is. Jin Wu massaged his aching forehead. It seemed that he had been greatly underestimating Cha Hien's actual skills up until now. Igrit's strength had been boosted overall by the Demon King's longsword. But in the end, he couldn't win against her skills. Right after Igrit's left arm flew away from being cut, Jin Wu ended this match. Even though they would regenerate back to full, he still couldn't stand the sight of his soldiers getting destroyed. This one doesn't count. Didn't you say that you'd bring out the most powerful summon? Cha Hien walked closer and only stopped when she was one step away from Jin Wu. Was that Black Knight really your strongest summon? She wasn't asking him here. No, it sounded as if she was just trying to confirm what she knew already. Please call out your strongest summon. We agreed to do from that get-go, didn't we? But, you may get injured. It's fine. I wanted to fight it at least one more time. Anyway. Jin Wu's eyes widened from her declaration. Wait, you knew. I saw the video footage. Cha Hien had watched the raid video starring Jin Wu several times by now. The giant monster that made its appearance during the clip, she definitely remembered seeing that monster shooting out the pillar of flames from somewhere. That summoned creature, that was the High Orc Shaman, the boss of that rank a dungeon. Am I correct? If that was the case, then the mutated ant monster he hunted down this time would also have become his summoned creature, as well. From the word go, she chose to go through the test while thinking of fighting that mutated ant. There is no meaning in a victory like this. She wanted to defeat the summoned creature that used the powers of the mutated ant monster, and thereby get Jin Wu to acknowledge her true value. He pondered for a little bit, before nodding his head. Baru. Right away, a shadow soldier enshrouded in jet black smoke rose up behind Jin Wu. Cha Hien instinctively jumped back and created some distance as soon as she saw Baru's entrance. Back then or now, that guy carried a truly horrendous aura. Jin Wu got genuinely worried when all color drained out of her face and quickly asked her, Will this really be fine? Even if Baru had gotten weaker compared to when he was alive, this guy was originally a killing weapon born solely for the purpose of eliminating hunters. Cha Hien's lips were squeezed shut in a straight line, as she weightily nodded her head. Baru had been staring at her quietly for a while, before lowering his head to whisper a question to Jin Wu. Oh my king, how should I deal with this female? Cha Hien must have been unable to hear what Baru was saying, because she showed no particular reaction at all. Defeat her without injuring her. It shall be done. 
the former king of the ants and the current shadow soldier turned towards the deeply tense female warrior. Shaheen swallowed her dry saliva. She felt goosebumps break out on her skin from the enormous amount of magic energy emitted by her opponent. Mr. Xiang Jin Wu fought against a creature like this and won. Her eyes that showed no signs of hesitation while fighting against Igrit were now trembling greatly. Buru was done with the necessary preparation to follow his sovereign's order, and suddenly, spat out a mighty screech. Blade-like claws began extending out from the ends of Baru's fingers, so Jin Wu standing behind him sent over an unhappy glare. Retract the claws. The high-spirited Baru immediately retracted his claws. Jin Wu drilled one more instruction into his soldier's head. If you injure that woman, it won't be nice for you, either. Got that. I shall follow your will. Only after hearing that definite answer from Baru did Jin Wu declare the start of the second bout. Begin. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.